Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rob Osler. I am the author of this novel. It's uh, called Devil's Chew Toy. It's a cozy mystery in terms of genre. I actually call it a quosi mystery, my term. I coined it here. Um, and it really is a quosi featuring queer characters, featuring uh, gay and lesbian characters to be exact in this case. Um, thanks to Boulder Bookstore for inviting me to do this video. I couldn't be more pleased to talk about uh, my book. And I'll start by giving you a little synopsis of the story, a little overview of what uh, you will find if you, um, if you buy the book, read the book, hopefully you enjoy the book. Um, the book um, starts with our protagonist, Hayden McCall. Um, what you should know about Hayden is Hayden's about five foot four inches tall. He's got hair like uh, crazy hair. If you remember Carrot Top, that comedian, I'm dating myself, but some of you will know who I mean. He's got crazy kind of reddish orange hair. That's Hayden, except he's small, pint size. Um, called a pocket gay to some. Um, anyway, Hayden goes out on the town. Um, he meets uh, Camilo Rodriguez, a sexy uh, go-go boy. Yes, there are go-go boys. I remember pitching this story ages ago um, at the San Francisco Writers Conference, and many of the agents um, who tended to be white and straight um, were like, you mean go-go girl? What's a go-go boy? Is there a go-go boy? Yes, people, there are go-go boys. Um, so Hayden meets uh, uh, Camilo Rodriguez, the sexy go-go boy. Things happen. Camilla goes missing. The police suspect foul play and Hayden is thought to be a suspect. Wondering what happened to Camillo, Hayden sets out to find the answers. He runs into and meets quickly early on in the story, Burley and Hollister, both women, both lesbians, both best friends of Camillo. They're fiercely loyal to Camillo. And so they join Hayden in his hunt for the missing dancer. The clues quickly lead them to a marvel of a boutique pet store called Barkingham Palace, where Camillo had recently taken a part-time job. Della Rupert is the very odd uh, proprietor of uh, Barkingham Palace, and she claims complete ignorance that, you know, of anything that's going on, but Hayden suspects something is up. They also uh, discover that uh, uh, Camilla recently had a boyfriend, uh, Ryan, who was also a dancer, now inexplicably rich. When Hayden and Hollister um, follow uh, Ryan to a secure, remote, creepy warehouse out by the airport, it is there that they discover a sinister plot, an international crime ring, and an odd connection between Della, the proprietress of Barkingham Palace, and Ryan. Things finally come to a head at an island estate in Puget Sound, which is in the Seattle area, for those of you who aren't familiar with Puget Sound. Um, and they discover the shocking truth behind Camillo's family and uh, solve the crime. That, in a nutshell, is Devil's Chew Toy. Um, hopefully uh, you'll agree it's quite a tale and you'll enjoy reading about it. If you see my eyes glance up, it's because I got another screen behind the screen to just hopefully make this go better for everybody, me, the presenter, and you, the, the listener, um, so it's not as haphazard. Um, okay, so that is the brief synopsis of the book. I'm scrolling down to get to the next question that was asked of me by the good people at Boulder Bookstore. Uh, why is it important to write a funny mystery that features a diverse cast? Fantastic question. I wrote the kind of book that I wanna read. When I crawl into bed at night, sometimes I don't wanna read nonfiction. I love it sometimes. Sometimes I don't wanna read a heavy duty dramatic book or one that's full of angst. Nothing against these books. Every, I mean, if, if it's a good book, it's a good book. But I wrote something in the spirit of Amistad Maupin, I tip my hat, sir, um, in Tales of the City, right? Fun fast-paced, humorous, I hope, um, and lighthearted with friendship at the core. Um, friendship is a big part of all of our lives. And I just wanted to celebrate friendship among gays and gays and lesbians and just have a good spirited romp of a book. Um, so that's why I wrote Devil's Chew Toy. Um, 
to give me and readers something lighthearted, fun, fast paced to read. And hopefully you'll agree. Um, why did you decide to have Hayden be a teacher? And he's also a part time blogger. He's a junior high school teacher by day, and he writes uh, Mates on Dates, which is a blog on dating um, in his spare time. So why have him be an amateur detective in this classic spirit of cozies and not a professional detective? This was an easy decision for me early on. Frankly, if he's either a private detective who you know, knows what he's doing or he's a police officer, um, there are procedures. There's right and wrong ways of going about an investigation. Having him being an amateur simply freed me of the burden of getting the procedure right. Mind you, the police show up now and again, and it's important not to have something, you know, just crazy happen that's, you know, that no reader's going to believe and, you know, stops you dead in your tracks. But it, it allows me not to have to follow police procedurals. Um, also, I really wanted you to feel like you're riding along on this crazy adventure with Hayden and, and Hollister. And by making them amateurs, I think it's, it's easier for the reader to see themselves in their shoes. Um, and, you know, and so that's why I did it. Ho hopefully I, I pulled it off. Um, and it's a fun read. Uh, let's see, writing process. I've attended many writer conferences and webinars for um, from uh, with panelists being you know professional writers and this this question often comes up and it's also often answered as are you a pantser or, or are you a plotter pantser being you know fly by the seat of your pants you just sit down tap 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 make it up see what happens uh, plotter I remember Jeffrey Deaver going to some course uh, on his from the Mystery Writers of America, which is a wonderful group um, I recommend uh, membership in if you're a writer. Um, and he he is a plotter. So he was saying, you know, I spend months with little post-it notes on the wall, figuring out every single plot line and how the plot lines intersect. And I know exactly what I'm going to write um, in terms of the book before I sit down to write it. And others just sit down and just like, I have no idea what's happening. My process is I actually start with a, an, a setting, a place that I think is, is interesting. In this case, it's Barkingham Palace, just a crazy Marvel over the top book, uh, pet store. Then I inhabit it with people. And then from there, I create the interactions between the people and set the plot. Um, oftentimes more on the pantser side, I would admit I am, you have to go back and kind of smooth things out and fix things and go, wait, this doesn't, you know, this doesn't, uh, make sense now with what I put in chapter two. So you have to go back and write chapter two all over again. It may be inefficient for some, but it, it works for me. And I, you know, I think any author would tell you, uh, the, the process that you should, uh, undertake is the process that works for you and keeps you engaged and that makes you productive and that turns out the best story. Um, are there more adventures planned for Hayden and friends? Yes, I am just this close to um, completing the first draft of the second Hayden and friends adventure. It's tentatively uh, titled Mysterium. As I was saying, I start with uh, setting. In this particular case, it's inspired by Cirque du Soleil meets Teatro Zanzani, which was a long running um, dinner slash circus, upscale circus show that ran for many, many years actually in Seattle. Um, also with ingredients of burlesque and mystery show. So I thought that was, that was gonna create an interesting setting. And then um, also there's gotta be crazy characters involved in that. So basically not to give it away, um, Burley is, is thought to be, um, is, is thought by the police to be the main suspect in a crime that happens related to Mysterium and to, uh, clear her name and, uh, and, and ultimately free her, um, their best friend Burley, Hollister and Hayden have to find the true, uh, criminal of the, the sideshow, um, murder at, uh, Mysterium. So um, I'm having a lot of fun with that. And, um, and hopefully that will be coming to you in the next year and a half after you, you uh, read uh, Devil's Chew Toy. Anything else you want us to know about your book? I suppose really it, it, it goes back to the 
the reason I wrote the book and, and I've, I've talked about this, like the, the, I, the notion, right, that I wanted to write a, the kind of book that I wanted to read. Um, there are, there is no shortage of um, books by gay authors that um, are set in the AIDS um, epidemic and whether it's nonfiction or fiction, um, those books are very heartfelt and can be, can be just fantastic piece, pieces of work. Um, it's, it's not an area that I wanted to get into, um, nor did I wanna write a book of coming out and, and angst or family drama. And again, I'm not poo-pooing those, those, those books and those themes, they're very important. There's a lot of good stories to be told and fantastic storytellers who are, who are telling them. Um, but again, I wanted to be, I wanted to write something that was more lighthearted, that focused on friendships, that was fast paced fun, um, that would make your flight from San Francisco to Boston go by in a, in a beat, and that might keep you up a little past your bedtime, um, just trying to get through another chapter. Um, it's the, it's, it's what I wanted to, it's what I wanted to read. So that is what I wrote. A short passage, passage from the book, not to exceed five minutes. So I'll, I'll try to make this uh, snappy. Um, by now you're, you're familiar with the names Hollister and Hayden. There are two main protagonists, Hayden, the pint size pocket gay and Hollister, who I describe as Serena Williams with a mohawk. I'm a big tennis fan. So I had a kind of a nod to Serena Williams. Um, they're actually searching now for Camillo and they've yet to run into Burley, but they're at Burley's Kager searching for Burley to ask Burley if she might know where the hell did Camillo go? Hollister and I navigated the eye is Hayden. This is told in Hayden's point of view. Um, Hollister and I navigated our way to the outdoor deck, which stood about five feet above the backyard. Like a ship's captain on the lookout for land, Hollister surveyed the sea of women below. There she blows, she said, using a finger pistol to single out a woman standing next to the fire pit. She's hard to miss, am I right? Her target in sight, Hollister hustled down the steps and marched across the expanse of an even brown lawn at double her usual brisk pace. I jogged to keep up, needing two strides to match one of hers as we closed in on Burley, a six and a half foot tall, 300 pound giant of a woman. Burley leaned down while Hollister stood on her tiptoes to accommodate an exchange of cheek kisses befitting a meeting at a Parisian cafe. That a woman was named Burley was an unexpected, and yet I was a thousand percent certain I'd never met anyone with a name that suited them better. Burley meet Hayden. Hayden, this here is Burley, queen of the ball. Burley was so imposing that even someone the size of Hollister looked puny standing beside her. Burley had a second notable characteristic, a pair of Waist length gray pigtails. Yowza, what happened to your eye, fella? Burley said. You look like a raccoon with an eye patch. I raised a finger ready to explain why the double reference was unnecessary, but I thought better of it. Instead, I decided to employ Camillo's name immediately and set the conversation in the right direction. Your friend Camillo kicked me in the face. Burley pondered my explanation and slowly nodded her watermelon sized cranium. Sounds about right. Big shoes, red no laces. Hollister rolled her eyes as if she'd heard this commentary before. Listen up, Burley. Hayden here is looking for Camillo. He's not here, is he? You know where you might be? Burley craned her arms skyward. Depends on the stars. It was now obvious Burley was totally baked. I'd smelled pot throughout the house, so I shouldn't have been surprised. And the Willie Nelson braid should have tipped me off. I didn't expect Hollister to do my talking for me, so I said, I was with Camillo last night. This morning, Camillo left at some point for some reason. The cops found his truck in an empty parking lot. The door was open and the engine was running. Burley's head rocked back on her shoulders as she pursed her thin lips. Running? I don't think so. I got bad feet. Oh boy. Sidestepping the confusing topic, I tried for simplicity. Where is Camillo? Burley nodded. Camillo is... We waited for her to continue, but she appeared to have departed to another psychic plane. I looked to Hollister for help. She raised her hand as if to say, I got this. Yo, Burley, Hollister shouted. Where is Camillo? Do you know where Camillo is? Is there any cake left? Burley, focus. Hollister let out a long sigh, indicating she'd been to this rodeo before. She got in Burley's face, shouted, Burley, pay attention, will you? Answer the question. Do you know where Camillo is? 
I didn't imagine many people, men or women, who would be comfortable hollowing, hollering into the face of someone as big as Burley, but Hollister didn't hesitate. She was like the giant whisperer, except for the yelling part. Burley reached deep, in, deep into the pocket of her jean shorts, retrieved her phone, and after several long seconds said, yo, Milo man, there's a guy here, here with Hollister. They're looking for you. You should see this guy, red hair, freckles, adorable. He's like one of those little Snickers bars you buy at Halloween fun-sized. Burley laughed, coughed, then coughed and laughed again. Hollister yanked the phone away from her, ended the call. Freaking ridiculous. Burley wasn't listening. She was looking skyward, seemingly captivated by the Little Dipper. Hollister shouted up to her, so you have no idea where Camilla might be? Burley surprised us both by answering, Roy's. The look on Hollister's face was anything but reassuring. Who's Roy, I asked, directing my question to both women, but knowing Hollister was the better for the coherent answer. Again, Burley surprised me. My brother. Hollister dropped her head, muttered something under her breath. She looked at me, shook her head, then looked up to Burley. What did Camilla want with Roy? Roy, Burley said. That boy got no sense. Hollister said, not asking about Roy, asking what Camilla wanted with Roy. A gun. What else? There's a little ex excerpt from uh, Devil's Chew Toy coming out by Crooked Lane Books in February of 2022. I hope you'll consider reading it, giving Boulder Bookstore your business. And when you do, um, I'd appreciate a review. Um, thanks. I hope you have a great year, great reading, and um, I appreciate your time. I do. Thanks. Thanks.